Welcome back everyone. Hope everybody had a nice Easter break. I'm interested to hear how you all spent your non-traditional holiday uh, because of social distancing. I began to think back of all the Easter's when I was a kid and all these memories flooded back. Um, but I'm going to share a few of them with you today. We uh, used to meet at my grandmother's house. We called her Mamma after church and we'd stand around and stand around and take that one picture on the stone walkway, you know, that special picture that every year you had to have, um, but now you couldn't find that picture with a search warrant. Um, and so then time would go on and your cousins would show up and you'd eat, and then it was the egg hunt. This is when the parents would go out and hide all these eggs, and then you would, as kids, get excited, and, and you go out and find these eggs, and there's always a couple patches that everybody looked at the Easter lilies were always the first place to go and our parents were real careful to make sure they kept track of how many eggs there were why because they were real eggs folks they didn't want you leaving those out there because then if grandpa found them with a the lawnmower like three four weeks later they'd be rotten and they'd smell and they'd be nasty so my cousin Eric and I thought one year we'd be smart we knew that there were three dozen eggs 36 so what we do we decided to make sure two of those eggs disappeared. We tossed them in the pond. Well, this turned out to be an ultimate fail for my cousin Eric and I because my parents needed to find these eggs. We thought it was funny at first because then they became the hunters. They went out and they tried to find exactly where they hid the eggs. And all of us kids stood by the sideline and we figured out that they were running around looking for these eggs so Grandpa wouldn't hit them with a lawnmower. But what we forgot was that our dads were jack of all trades. And so once they figured out that we threw them in the pond, my uncle became a mechanic and my dad became an electrician. You know, my cousin got a tune up and I got lit up. Well, that's better than when they acted like lumberjacks where we had to go cut our own switch. Anyway, my mother continued the tradition as we got older and we had our own families. Um, we would always have that special picture out by the lilac bush. I don't know if I've seen that picture yet either. Anyway, we'd have egg hunts. The kids would, we'd get to hide the eggs now. Uh, instead of being real eggs though, they were plastic eggs and uh, they had money and candy in them. And then we started our own traditions in our own homes, like uh, going to Miller City for the egg hunt. And uh, obviously that got canceled this year. That brings us to this year. Our Easter was spent in our living room watching Pastor Schmunk on our iPad. And then we moved over to Franklin Graham from Central Park. And then we were blessed with a message from my daughter, Kinley, um, from her children's Bible. And then, of course, I, I moved up here because I wanted to show everybody that my kids painted this the front window for Easter, which I kind of hope that new tradition stays. That's kind of cool. I find it funny how we're just 30 days into our social distancing, and we feel like we're the ones making the sacrifice. Well, all the while, we just finished a holiday where one man, Jesus, made the ultimate sacrifice for us. It sounds trivial to me that we think our social distancing is, you know, the sacrifice. Heck, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness by himself, fasting and praying. Now that's social distancing. All right, we're back at the stairwell. And as you all know, I love quotes. And I have three of them for you today. One from John, and two from Abe Lincoln. The first one, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. That's John 15, 13. And I believe that we've been seeing that around. People are good. The elementary parade that the teachers went around town took an hour to say hi to all their students. Uh, people are getting creative by helping their neighbors out. And then some of you are continuing to wash your hands really, really well, like you're scrubbing into surgery on a MASH episode. The first Abe Lincoln quote is, well, it's kind of a short story to start with. During the Civil War, a reporter asked Lincoln if God was on the side of the Union. Lincoln answered, Sir, my concern is not whether God is on the side of the Union. My greatest concern is whether the Union is on the side of God. So, keep your eyes up, your head clear, and know what our overall goal is. That's what will allow us to get back together as soon as possible. I'll leave you with this quote from Lincoln. The best thing about the future is that it comes one day at a time. As we enter into our next chapter of distance learning, take each day as it comes. Continue to work every day 
to stay on task and up to date. So when this time comes and the quarantine is over, we can enjoy it together. This has been another talk from the stairwell from, with Stegbauer. And remember, others have handled things like this before us, and so there's no reason we can't make it through as well. Stay smart, stay safe, and stay healthy.